With nine different weapon classes and dozens of different coils, it can be tough figuring out the best ways to coil your gear in Forbidden West. We broke this all down in my original coiling guide, but that was almost a year ago, and a lot has changed since then. Of course, we got new super strong elite coils in the Burning Shores DLC, the arena duplication glitch was discovered, allowing us to get more copies of the best coils easily, and of course, myself and other Horizon fanatics have had a year's worth of time to experiment with and optimize coil sets. So let's check out all the new best ways to coil every weapon. Now, I'm going to show you coil sets that assume you've got lots of copies of the best coils by either doing multiple New Game Plus runs or using the Arena Duplication glitch, which I show you how to do in this video linked below. And since I know a lot of people haven't played Burning Shores, I'll also show you the best sets you can put together with just base game coils. If you don't have enough copies of the purple and gold coils you see in this video, then in general you can just fill in with the blue or even green versions for now, but seeing the ultimate sets will help you understand what to aim for. There's also a few coils that work well on almost any weapon and for boosting almost any damage type. So let me show you those now. The 15% concentration coil might just be the most versatile coil in the game because it's so easy to trigger and it boosts pretty much every type of damage. Impact, tear, explosive, elemental buildup, knockdown power, you name it. Concentration is free to use and recharges very quickly. Plus it slows down time making it easier to aim, so you're probably often using it anyway. Using copies of the 15 or 10% coil on pretty much any weapon is a solid option. Of course, it won't boost damage as much as some other coils, but it's easy to use consistently. There are also a few other coils that are almost as flexible as concentration, like overdraw coils. Most weapons can be overdrawn, indicated by the reticle changing form and the ammo flashing blue. And most weapons also have an overdraw damage perk built in, so using the 10%, 15%, or new elite overdraw coils to boost this even further is a great way to fill in coil slots. Agility and melee follow-up coils also boost all the important damage types, but agility requires that you're either sliding or falling while releasing the projectile, and melee follow-up requires that you whack a machine first with your spear, and then the boost only lasts about 8 seconds. So agility and melee follow-up are harder to use. And unfortunately, silent strikes, critical strikes, and the new grapple strike mechanic don't trigger melee follow-up, which I feel like might be a bug. Remember, using blue or green versions of coils, which you can buy at many hunter merchants, is totally valid until you can get better ones. And you can farm slightly stronger versions of some green and blue coils coils from machines. Most coils can't be farmed though, and the merchants don't restock, so if you're wondering where to find certain coils and how many you can get on each playthrough, you should definitely check out the Google spreadsheet I put together linked in the description. It's also important to understand which types of damage different coils boost. My friend Paris has done excellent research on this, so if you want to dive into that, I'll have his spreadsheet linked below too. Okay, let's dive into specific coil recommendations for each weapon type, but real quick before we do, I want to thank you guys for helping me recently reach 50,000 subscribers here on YouTube. Starting my channel about a year and a half ago, I never expected it to have grown so much by this point. And I've been blown away by the support and encouragement so many of you have given me, and I hope you're enjoying the awesome community we're building here. Even if this is the first video of mine you've ever watched, I want you to know that I really appreciate each and every one of you. So thank you guys for being awesome. All right, let's get started with Hunter Bows. I know many players use the Hunter Bow as a damage dealing weapon, but as indicated by their high tear damage stat, they're actually much better suited for removing components which in turn deals removal damage and disables certain attacks. The best base game coils for boosting tear damage are a full set of 25% component tear. These won't help you tear off armor plates, but it's pretty rare you'll want to do that anyway. Once you get to the burning shores, you'll get the elite tear coil, which is even stronger because its 12% and 25% boost will be combined when hitting most components. So once you've got them, I'd load up on elite tear coils. If you don't want to be purely tear focused, you could also mix in 15% concentration, overdraw or agility coils. Or you could use five of the new elite overdraw coils, which in addition to boosting overdraw damage, also boosts draw and reload speed, making it super fast to fire triple notch shots. Now, I know many of you will still want to use your hunter bow for dealing damage, and the elite overdraw set is actually pretty solid for that too. Just like when using your hunter bow for tear, you'll be able to fire off triple notch shots really fast, and you'll draw really fast too. It also speeds up using the high volley weapon technique if you prefer that. Loading up on a full set of the new elite crit coils also works well for high impact damage on a hunter bow. However, the original purple crit chance coils aren't very good for this, because hunter bows only crit for 50% extra damage, which is less than the 75% you get from a full set of 15% coils. But the elite crit coils boost crit chance and damage, and even though it says the crit damage boost is 15%, it appears to actually be 25%, at least on patch 1.24. Plus, the way the boost actually gets calculated with these coils makes it even stronger. In the base game, your best option 
option for boosting impact damage is to use close or long range coils, depending on your playstyle. The problem with those though is that they require you to either be more than 30 meters away or closer than 10 meters to the target, which you won't always be able to do. For something a little more flexible, albeit with a lower maximum damage output, the 15% concentration, overdraw, and or agility coils will give you a decent boost too. While impact damage isn't their strength, hunter bows are very good at applying elemental states, with frost of course being the strongest. Fortunately, even on a single playthrough, you can get 6 copies of the 15% frost coil, and using 5 of them on the sun scourge is definitely very strong. However, 15% overdraw, concentration, and agility also boost elemental buildup by the same amount, and they can boost any element. They also boost other types of damage as we've already discussed, so something like 3 15% frost and 2 15% overdraw on the sun scourge is a clever set. If you've got more copies, a full set of overdraw coils can work well too, but you might also want to consider going for an instant frost build. The sun scourge has a 4% instant brittle chance perk. Slot in 5 of the 3 instant brittle coils and will have a 19% chance to trigger the brittle state with any shot. That might not seem great, but keep in mind instant chances override a machine's elemental resistances. So for example, we can use this to get a frost cloth frozen even though they're super resistant to frost. The elite frost and overdraw coils in the burning shores are excellent too. I'd replace at least one of the 15% frost coils with one or both of these as soon as you get them. A full set of elite overdraw works really well if you want to boost more than just frost, but 5 of the elite frost coils is super strong. It's basically the same as 5 purple 15% frost coils plus a 25% chance for instant brittle, plus the extra 4% from the sun scourge's perk. You can do this instant brittle build on a warrior bow too. Just equip 5 of the elite frost coils on the new eye of the storm from the burning shores. True, the 25% total chance is a bit lower than the sun scourge's 29, and warrior bows have limited range, but the ammo is much cheaper and the fire rate is much higher, giving you way more chances to trigger the instant. Now, with base game coils, you can actually do a similar build on the Karja's Bane or Reign of Sparks by loading up on a variety of the 3% instant chance coils. Just keep firing off regular light arrows and you'll cycle through instant states, which actually works really well to continuously interrupt a machine, and it's a great way to build up valor. Warrior bows are also excellent for dealing damage, particularly when using the spread shot weapon technique. In the base game, a full set of 5 15% crit chance or 25% melee follow-up is a great way to boost damage. Unfortunately though, as I mentioned before, melee follow-up won't be triggered by silent, critical, or grapple strike, so you'll have to whack a machine first to trigger it. If you like the crit build, then once you get copies of that excellent elite crit coil from the Burning Shores, you'll want to use those instead for an even more significant damage boost. Sharp shot bows are great for dealing damage too. I'm an advocate of going all in on crit chance on a sharp shot bow, as their 2.5x crit damage multiplier is very strong. Hitting a crit with a sharp shot bow gives you 150% damage boost, which is more than the max of 125% we can get with 5 25% coils. It's true you won't get a crit on every shot, but crit chance isn't dependent on special circumstances like long range, stealth, and high ground. So for a base game set, I go for 5 purple crit chance. Of course, the elite crit coils are even better than purple ones once you have those. Stealth coils are also a good choice if you like to play stealthy, but even if you don't, keep in mind you can trigger them with a smoke bomb anytime. We also have the very powerful 100% sharp shot tear damage coils. These are highly specialized, and unfortunately they don't apply to tear precision arrows, but they will make your regular and advanced precision arrows deal some insane tear damage. With a couple of these equipped, you can pretty much rip off any component with one or two shots, even on ultra hard. I wouldn't equip five though, that's just overkill. Bolt blasters are another great weapon for raw damage output, but they can be a bit tricky to coil. Many of us like to use them with the sustain burst weapon technique, which unfortunately can't hit crits. So if you like sustain burst, crit chance, and elite crit coils are off the table. Close and long range are your next best options, but of course require you to either be closer than 10 meters, which is risky with such a slow weapon, or further than 30 meters, which is close to the bolt blaster's maximum range of 40. Now you can also use a bolt blaster with the spread blast weapon technique, in which case a crit build is very viable. Load up on 5 purple crit chance coils in the base game or 5 elite after burning shore and you'll be able to pump out some insane damage. A set of 5 purple concentration coils offers more flexibility, but at the cost of lower damage output. Oh, and if you'd like to speed up the bolt blaster's slow reload, then reload speed and elite overdraw coils can help you out there. I know spike throwers are a favorite weapon for many, and we've got a number of great ways to coil them too. If you're a fan of explosive spikes, you're in luck, because the purple 12% explosive damage coil is one of the few in the game that can be farmed from machines. So even on a single playthrough, you can get a full set of 5. However, 15% concentration and overdraw coils boost explosive damage as well, and they're a bit stronger than the 12%
and explosive coils. They also boost other types of damage, so using concentration coils on a spike thrower is a smart idea. You could also use a full set of purple overdraw coils. However, keep in mind that the overdraw boost won't be triggered while using spike thrower weapon techniques. Concentration and overdraw are also great if you like using drill spikes. Not only will they boost impact damage, but also knockdown power, allowing you to trigger knockdowns more easily. I've got a whole video on how knockdown and other damage types work that I'll link below if you're interested, but this means that the elite overdraw coils from the Burning Shores work really well on spike throwers too. Not only will they boost damage, but they'll also allow you to draw faster, making it easier to overdraw your throws. If you're using drill spikes for knockdowns, this is even better because spike throwers have a hidden 50% knockdown power bonus when overdrawn. That's why on my last argument, I used 3 elite overdraw and 2 elite knockdown. I'd go for 5 elite overdraw, but sometimes you need to throw a bit early, so I like having the elite knockdown coils to provide a boost to my non-overdrawn spikes. Plus, the damage boost to knockdown enemies is pretty nice too. If you prefer using drill spikes for damage or even explosive spikes, a full set of elite overdraw does work really well, but a full set of elite crit can be even better, especially since it'll work with weapon techniques. Damage over time coils are also a good choice for drill spikes, but it's always better to use something that will boost the damage of the initial hit, because the damage over time ticks are calculated based on that value, so boosting the initial hit boosts damage over time too. It's also worth noting that elemental spikes offer some of the highest elemental damage stats of any ammo type. That's elemental impact damage, not build up, mind you. So, if you want to deal damage directly to a machine by exploiting its elemental weaknesses, elemental coils, especially the new elite ones, work well to boost elemental spikes. Similar to spike throwers are blast slings, with their elemental and explosive bombs. With only base game coils, I'd recommend overdraw and or concentration for a blast sling. Agility is a good choice too, but as we know, it's a little trickier to leverage. If you want more damage, long and close range coils can work, especially close range coils when combined with the burst dodge weapon technique. Of course, you can boost elemental bombs with corresponding elemental coils or the new elite elemental coils. The new elite overdraw would be my pick for an ultimate set though, since it's so flexible and allows you to fire so quickly. Like on spikes though, they won't work while well using weapon techniques, so you could also always do elite crit coils. I'll also just mention that if explosive knockdown mechanics are ever fixed, knockdown power coils will be really strong on blast slings. We think explosive knockdown is bugged because the official strategy guide indicates you should be able to knock down machines with just a few bombs, but it takes far more than it should, at least as of patch 1.24. Up next, we have my favorite class of weapons, Shredder Gauntlets. I feel the best set of base game coils for a Shredder is all 15% concentration, as they're easy to trigger and give a solid boost. You could also mix in some agility coils for the same boost, but they're a bit harder to trigger, as mentioned earlier. Damage over time coils can work well too if you don't have enough concentration or agility yet. If you're using non-elemental Shredders on something like the Final Chapter or Distant Thunder, then long range coils can work well too, and provide a larger damage boost. I think long range make more sense for shredders than close range, but if you're good at using them up close, then close range coils will give you the same boost. Unfortunately, regular crit chance coils aren't a great option, because shredders only have a 1.5x crit damage multiplier. However, like so many other weapons, the elite crit coils are an excellent choice because they'll boost that multiplier in addition to the crit chance. Interestingly, the elite crit coils actually also boost elemental buildup, unlike the original purple version. So these work really well for boosting elemental shredders. Since shredder hits and the fourth throw explosions deal tear damage, the elite tear coils work really well too, but I prefer the elite crit. Rope casters have recently been in the spotlight a bit because of the new legendary one in the Burning Shores. However, in the base game, the elite rope caster is still very strong. Rope casters draw very slowly, so to make them more usable, it helps to load them up with draw speed coils. However, you can also draw your rope caster more quickly with the hidden quick draw mechanic by sliding while drawing. You can learn more about quick draw in my secret combat mechanics video, but if you're leveraging it, then you may want to replace some or all of your draw speed coils with reload speed coils, since draw speed won't be much of an issue anymore. However, once you get the elite overdraw coils from the burning shores, I would definitely load up on those since they boost reload and draw speed, plus give you some extra overdraw damage, which will also boost the explosive canisters on the new tie that binds, if you like using those. Finally, we have trip casters, which I don't personally use, but the most compelling trip wires in my opinion are stagger beams. These can deal a lot of damage over time, especially when you load up your trip caster with damage over time coils. The elemental and elite elemental coils can be great if you want to use elemental trip wires, like shock for example, which I would consider to be the most useful. Many trip caster users like the blast wires too, and explosive damage coils are your best option for boosting those. But if I were going to use a trip caster in my loadout, I think I'd probably use it to frost machines instantly, which is a neat trick you can learn about in my advanced combat tips video. Alright guys, that's my guide for coiling every weapon in the Forbidden West. 
Shout out to Phosphorus, Paris, Slazinger, and Quicknear over on my Discord server for providing input on some of these recommendations. I'll have those spreadsheets and all the videos I mentioned linked down in the description. And while you're down there, leave me a comment to let me know what your favorite coil sets are. Oh, and if you want to see how to easily get more copies of your favorite coils, you should definitely check out this video right here where I show you how to use the infinite resource duplication glitch. As always, thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.